<laughs> oh my God, it's so much fun to see you. Look at you, you're still looking fabulous. Hello, Ali Mang. I've changed my shirt since the last time we spoke, but I put on the lucky jacket, so here we go. I had to dress for you because you are fabulous. Congratulations on the new book. Well, thank you, Mr. James B. And it is such a pleasure. I love, love, love working with you. Any kind of capacity. We have had so many years together on all I, kinds of different projects. By the way, I, where did, how did you pop into my life? Like, I, I feel like I've known you forever, but I do not remember how we met. I think it was one of your first jazz Savaris. I think it was one of the first. Wow. Yeah, because I've been a fan for years and listen to you, listen to, and I think we either won a jazz safari or we said we have to get on this bus. Yeah. And uh, I mean, from then on, it was this love affair between I know. you and I. <laughs> well, listen, I mean, I honestly think you're like, like my sister, not my actual sister. You're very different, but you're, you're me in a dress. Your energy is so hilariously fun. Oh. And... I know this is like I'm kind of patting myself on the back when I say how hot you are because uh, I try. But no, no, I'm kidding. Um, no, but our energy is through the roof. And I have been a fan. I know we'll talk about some of your acting and, and, and singing and stuff in a minute. But the books, the book you wrote about your mom and, and, and coping with the grief uh, when you lost your mom was really helpful. When my mom passed away, I, th there's a lot of lessons I could learn from your book. Oh, you know, the day you sent a picture of you reading the book, um, honestly, tears to my eyes. This is the thing. I was, I, think I was in Cuba or Costa Rica. I was under a palm tree reading your book. <laughs> it meant the world to me. It meant the world to me. You know, this is the thing. When you, when you do things, uh, it's for others. It's to help others. And I feel that if we are in service to others, then we are blessed just from from just doing that alone. So thank Absolutely. you. I tell people that if they're ever feeling depressed and a bit, oh, me, 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 just walk down to the nearest cafe or donut shop, listen to somebody else's story and get a grip. <laughs> right? Get a grip, you bet. So speaking of getting a grip, yeah. this new book, which was out yesterday, it's, it's brand spanking new. Um, tell everyone about this amazing idea for a book. Well, the book is called Finding the Light, How We Transformed Our Fears into Renewed Hope During the Pandemic. Bum, 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 bum. Right. This is an uplifting yep. book. It's not a news story. It's not a political piece. And it involves 70, over 70 people from four different countries. James B., you were featured in my entertainment leaders section. And what I loved about yours, and I actually have, I have a hard copy. This is an ebook that people can download right now at findingthelight.ca. James is highlighted. Lila Bialy is highlighted. We have entertainment leaders. Yes. If I may. Lila Bialy. <laughs> okay, I always sing her name whenever I hear it. She is a spiritual giant. Lila Bialy, not just her music, her, her entire being is just so wonderful. Oh, there she is. What a wonderful human being and what a great talent. Oh my. You, you know how to pick them. Now, I assume you knew her ahead of time, right? Yeah, you know what? Lila Bialy was my last interview. I started interviewing April 19th. I think you and I had our interview April 20th. That's right. Um, it's a week after my birthday and I was still hungover. <laughs> <laughs> yep. we, we love your birthdays, by the way. I also think that I've been to a number, in fact, oh, one of right. the ones you did at Old Mill. Oh, that was a big one. Yeah, yeah. I know. I used to do like seven day birthdays. It was called birthday week. And I try to raise money for charity from at least two of the shows, and some of them would be smaller, some would be larger. And last year, zero, and it looks like this year, who knows? But uh, speaking of charity, your book is also helping three of your favorite charities. Yes, they are. Thank you for mentioning that, because that's what it's all about. It's giving back, it's giving back. And as you just said, it's the power of that. You have a strong message. We have a crew of over 100 beautiful creative artists in this book, Finding the Light. But the, the charities are, the first one is called Lighthouse. Ah, okay. So Russ Little and the guys, uh, <laughs> they're the red. You know, Lighthouse hasn't been touring much. Oh, wait, it's not that Lighthouse. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is Lighthouse. And they started in 1999. Um, it's a support 
they help every um, child and teen who is dealing with the grief of a lost one in their family, and they specialize in suicide. Um, I lost my sister in 2006. She took her own life, and her daughter went to Lighthouse to get help. And she now volunteers to help other teens and tweens and children how to deal with their grief. It is the most incredible charity. And yeah, so 50% of all the sales of this ebook goes to Lighthouse. It also goes to Lemonade Warriors, which is a combination. I know it's love a that, love that name. I know what that is by just saying it. Kids being entrepreneurs and helping charities, right? Fun. Yeah. And you bet. And the third one is One World Stage and Screen, and it helps and mentors people, kids, tweens, young people who have real promise in the performing arts and stage and screen and as athletes, but don't have the financial whereabouts. Most of them are below the poverty line, but they have incredible talent. So 50% of all the sales of our ebook are going to those three charities. Well, that's so 150%. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I get you. Mean fifty percent is divided between those three. Correct. Half is not my strong suit. I like the no, alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> but our motives are always pure, and that's the most important thing. Now you have uh, Canada, uh, U.S., uh, England, and Australia. Correct. Four, four English-speaking countries, all telling stories about about dealing with the pandemic. Yes, we do. And you know what's fun about it? Well, there's so many different aspects to it, but. Everybody has their own story uh, and they are all different, but they all talk about the same things. And those are the tried and test true values of life. You know, being grateful, staying in the moment, be uh, intentional about living. And I think that is what, that are the, uh, the positive things that have come out of this pause in life. Right. And this book's going to help people. I think anyone who's not seeing that and not, not having much hope, that book really does bring a lot of hope. I think it's, I think it really is going to help people just read a few other people's opinions on what actually to do with your free time, of which there is too much. For sure. Either, because it's free time. So <laughs> use it. No question about it. And I, you know, particularly our creative industry, the entertainment industry, and actually, James, you spoke about that so fluidly and so candidly in your article in our book. And I was thrilled about it. Um, I just loved right away. Uh, do you remember what you even said? <laughs> I, well, the two things I remember is my parents have a wicked sense of humor. They have given that to me. So I find humor in every terrible thing. Some of the times it's dark humor, but it's good. It, it keeps me going. But the other thing I really remember is hearing new birds and seeing foxes and possums and things around that I'm like, wow, all it took is for us to stay in our house for a month and all the critters come out. It's been, it's kind of beautiful. It is. And you know, those are the things, this is a time capsule. Those are the things that we're all going to remember about this time. Yes, it's been a difficult time. There's no question about it. My business completely went you know, right. but we're learning. We're learning how to repivot. We're learning how to just recalibrate because we all have a different handprint and therefore we absolutely need to just, you know, express ourselves in new right. ways because we are making a difference. I just remembered one more thing and it was probably the most important thing on that, that, that I wrote um, is that now that people have spent half of a year watching movies, reading books and listening to music, Hopefully they'll have a newfound respect for the arts because, and this me being ridiculously optimistic because the music business has been in trouble uh, since the 90s, since Napster. So all of a sudden, no one's making any money. Well, in some ways, musicians are already used to never making any money. So we're, in some ways, we're better equipped to deal with how lame the financial picture is because we had tempered ambition to begin with, not lowered expectations. Tempered I love that. Tempered yeah. ambition. Oh, you're so good. But you're right. And, and I really appreciated that point of view. And, you know, this is the thing. The sharings in this book are raw and real. This is not Pollyanna. It's not mm -mm -mm. Yeah. But what I made sure of as we interviewed you and then as we wrote um, the essays and really 
capsulize them was that I had an uplifting end. So we, we went down and then we came up because that's really what life is all about. We're all going through moments. We all have dust on our face. We're all, but it is finding the light of the situation, no matter how small, that's the power of this ebook. And yeah. you contributed incredibly. Did I show you off yet? Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Can we? Yeah. <laughs> You're so funny. And then, of course, excuse me from uh -oh. James B. C. A. Tell us about this lovely gentleman that you, besides yourself, excuse you know me. What? The Levy clan. Who knew that Eugene Levy was going to have such a talented son? They were going to have a show that would storm North America. I mean, what a great, what a great guy he is. Down to earth. Uh, when I was a kid, I was living in Rosedale in my friend's basement for a little while. And I admit he was a bit afraid of us. We were weird looking uh, hairdos and don'ts, you know, mohawks and nohawks. And, and he was polite to us, but he didn't get it. And when I interviewed him there at Jazz FM, he was just absolutely sincere, still a little bit funny, even when he was trying not to be, but he can't help it. I've seen American Pie too many times. I, I just look at him and I think funny right away. Well, you know, it was funny, even on one of his many um, acceptance speeches at the Emmys this past, you know, few months ago, he said, I never knew that being a straight man was actually going to get me somewhere. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, that show is really good. And that's funny you'd use that picture off my website because of the, you know, uh, hundreds of people I, I've interviewed in the last, I don't know, 10 years. Um, he's just one of the guys that I was happiest for in a way because he deserves all the accolades and he could have easily retired. He already did so many amazing films. Um, yeah, he could have done anything, but uh, him and his kid, Dan, they're doing a great job. There's no question about it. Um, I wanted to just thank you to James because you've always been such a supporter of mine. And I love, love, love highlighting anything that you, do you know you're one of the best interviewers and interviewees ever? No, I don't. But you just asked me a question. Well played. You've just turned this around. Mm -hmm, interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. Listen, I know for a fact, like you studied theater you were on a couple of TV shows. I saw little cameos. You were a character in uh, TNT, Alfred Hitchcock, right? Yeah, um, I, I did seven episodes of Top Caps. If you were an actress in the 90s, right. um, everybody did that. My, my claim right. to fame, though, certainly was Mark Harmon. Um, and I had just, an, a, a, they, they called them actor roles. And I had an act, it was one of my first gigs, and I was at the reception desk, and Mark Harmon walked in. And my line was, it's to the right, that way. <laughs> Yeah, and of course, you know, woo, I was so, so that was my big part. And I'll remember even that day back in the 90s, he was so, you know, his eyes and this, this, and he had just um, finished um, his, his moments with his wife and she was fighting breast cancer. So everybody was Mark Harmon this, Mark Harmon that. And anyway, that was my claim to fame. <laughs> you know, I would have thought it would have been meeting Mr. T, but that's just me. What do I know? <laughs> I, I have a little story about that. May I share it? Yeah. Okay. Mr. T was fabulous. He did a show called TNT um, and with the great Alex Amini and many other beautiful, beautiful actors. Yeah, Alex and was terrific in that. And uh, that was an Elvana production. It was indeed. Look at yes. you. Bam, bam, bam. Just around the corner from Jazz FM at the time, anyway. Yeah, that's right. Um, and I'll never forget. So I was doing a principal role, and I was a prize fighter. Yes, Mang the Chick was a prize fighter. Whoa. <laughs> and there was some murder going on that he was playing my bodyguard because people were after me. And I'll never forget, every time I came in, you know, I had sort of, you know, I was sort of looking strong. And I'd come in on set and he'd open up the, the, the rings that, you know, how the, the ropes of a ring where you get in. He right. opened them up so I could walk in. And he just, he'd always say this in the most cool way. He'd go, ooh, Allison, nice to see you this morning. Yeah, and you're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he could not have been more kind, I'm telling right. you. Uh, yeah. the reputation, absolutely, I don't know what people think of him, the kindest gentleman you have ever met. Right. I, I've heard that from people who worked with him, and also that he was always very hungry. <laughs> Say things like, 
I need two servings of potatoes. And like, he'd be like yelling like Mr. T, but in a fun way. He was having fun with his character. Oh yeah. He's you also sing. Now, I, I think you sang at a Jazz FM event one song at Lula Lounge once. Did that happen? I did. I yes. did. And I did. You even... shocked me. You shocked. I didn't remember where I saw you, but I saw you sing a song once and you shocked me because I didn't know you were a singer. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Yes. It's kind of how I started in the business at the Charlottetown Festival years and years and years and years ago. Um, it was actually at the Lulu Lounge. It was a benefit that I produced um, to raise funds for my sister, the, Le the Leanne Mang Foundation, to honor her. And it was a wonderful night. We had Russ McIntyre. Stu Harrison was the oh, MD. So that's it where I saw you sing was at that Lula event. It was. And then... I sang in your salon one time too, which you were so gracious. And I believe the beautiful June Garber was there too. Yep. <laughs> I'm doing this a lot today. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. We're mentioning all the beautiful women. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Junie. Um, so this book right now, you're going to be doing interviews with all different people talking about this. Um, if there's anything I can do, I'll be sharing it on social media. I'll be posting this interview, of course, but anything I can do, because I just think it's a fantastic idea what you've done. I, I think it's so important and turn things around and show people that there's another way to look at it. Absolutely. Well, you are part of that, that, that push forward. And listen, I don't think every day is perfect and that's not what we want. What we want to know is that there's hope. And yep. this book will give that, it's like the friend, it's a five minutes at a time, I call it vitamin D for the soul, read somebody's story, one story will most definitely speak to you personally, and that's the point. It's also filled with the most beautiful pictures from around the world that professional photographers provided for me. Uh, they're all credited. It is a gorgeous book, and I am so grateful to you, James B. Well, I think I had seen you also on the shopping channel. You're doing really well over there. Um, I, I know that now you act. I know you sing. So are you going to do any voice books are you going to actually read the book is there an option for people to buy that one day yes you know we're going to do that for sure timing was of the essence believe it or not this is a short from beginning to end producing a book in less than six months is pretty exceptional i've done this is my fourth now it's definitely been the quickest um so yes we will get to audiobooks i'm going to have you come to our studio to record your story that would be a pleasure if you are willing well and i can even do it I, i'd love to see you but if I, it'll be weird if i'm wearing a mask trying to talk i'll be like kenny from south Park. I could record it on my own system and send it to you, but I love the idea. I think, I think, and your voice reading some of your older books, because I don't, people don't know about all your other books. So I think it's a good idea to make your books available, especially people when they're feeling lonely, they want a human voice. If they're, if they're shut in during the winter, uh, people that are, have long drives, a friend of mine spends all of his time in the RV and he would love to listen to your voice reading a book. <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you. Look at you. You're so, you're such, oh my gosh, you're such a cheerleader of many and, and we thank you. You know, you have been helping us and comforting us through the years with your fabulous voice and your crazy way. But what I love most about you, James, is that you're never afraid to also really talk the truth. You know, you're always about entertaining us and giving us a laugh and making us go, hmm. But then you'll throw us and you'll give us something that's such great meaning. And uh, thank you. That's why you are James B. That's why you are my sister that isn't really my sister. <laughs> <laughs> sister from another mother. Is that what it is, you think? Thank you for your time. And you know we're going to be posting this everywhere we can. Oh, I love it. And may I say, too, a shout out to your father who just put out his memoirs. Oh, I purchased it. I'm waiting for it. I'll be interviewing my own dad coming up before Christmas. So there you go. That's wonderful. Thank you, Allie. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.